And here's a toast to the trolls, haters, and fuckwads. Virgin Coca-Cola. Warranty worked widely in the evangelical community, forging ties with the Jesus people, the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship, Pentecostal preachers, charismatics, and anyone who unquestioningly accepted his testimony. They adored him. He was real solid proof that an occult underground was devouring America's youth. <laughs> The Adventures of Gregory Peccary. Oh, here comes Gregory, little Gregory Peccary, the nocturnal gregarious wild swine. As mentioned earlier, uh, Warnke moved Sue and their ch two children to Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1974 so they could attend Trinity Bible College. The Warnkes became friends with another student, one Carolyn Alberti. Her testimony, while not as thrilling as Mike's, uh, still grabbed attention. She was third, degree, third generation mafia with a dad who ran gambling dens and a mom who ran whorehouses. <laughs> By the end of the school year, Mike and Carolyn were having an affair. It was also around this time that Warnke made the strange decision to become a deacon in the Ciro Chaldean Church a small community of congregations in New York and Connecticut that came from a mission movement of the Cyril Chaldean Church in India in the late 1800s, and is now known as the Evangelical Apostolic Church of North America, and is part of the Hebrew Roots Movement. He would later lace his own services with the Cyril Chaldean accoutrement, such as gaudy robes and incense, which is very much at odds with the negative picture he paints on page 9 of the Satan Seller about the trappings of Catholicism. After graduating from Trinity in the spring of 1975, the Warnkeys moved to Denver. Mike lured his mistress Carolyn there with the promise of employment at Pastor Wally's Happy Church, where Mike had an unpaid position as an evangelist for one of the church's lay ministries. By the end of the year, he and Carolyn were openly a couple, and his employment with the Happy Church was over. In September of 1976, Mike moved with Carolyn to Nashville. <clears throat> he divorced Sue that September, uh, December, despite desperate efforts by friends to negotiate a reconciliation. In early 1977, Carolyn and Mike married, though a few Christian associates frowned heavily upon the uh, divorce and remarriage. It didn't put a serious dent in Warnke's public image. He appeared on the cover of the October 1977 issue of Harmony, a Christian magazine, and in the article he's quoted as saying, "Now I'm a strong civil rights advocate." The last time I had been in Alabama was with Dr. Martin Luther King back in my college days when I went down there on freedom rides. The last time I was there was to march in a civil rights demonstration. But remember, Warnke was in college in 1965. The freedom rides were in 1961 when he was 15 years old and living in California. Nice try, Mike. Continuing. In the fall of 1978, Mike's future was so bright that he had to wear shades. His three albums were the most popular Christian comedy records ever made, and his 1979 tour was going to be his biggest yet. He had also written a second memoir entitled Hitchhiking on Hope Street. He was touring continuously while Carolyn stayed in Nashville with her mother. Can you see where this is going? I bet you can. In Kentucky, uh, Warnke met a young lady named Rose Hall and began meeting her in various cities while he was on tour, dishing out comedy, salvation, and the good news of the gospel. At some point, his relationship with Carolyn allegedly turned violent. One night that summer, according to Carolyn, Mike shoved her into a wall during a fight and split her head open. He told her, quote, If you go to a local hospital and tell them that you're what your name is, I'll kill you. I don't have to do it physically. I can do it from another room or another state. You ever notice that about uh, Christian guys when they don't get their way? It's like instant demon. Why is that? Does their religion make them psycho or something? You know, um, 
I guess he really didn't uh, completely eschew uh, satanic magic after all. Or something like that, anyway. They divorced in November, but Mike Warnke told several friends that Carolyn had died. Which is a complete lie. Huh. Another one of the Ten Commandments broken. Uh, sometime after his third wedding, Warnke became a bishop. Independent Bishop Richard Morrill had married Carolyn and Mike in Nashville, and in 1980 he consecrated Warnke a bishop in his Holy Orthodox Catholic Church, Eastern and Apostolic, which is registered in Texas. In 1982, Rose and Mike registered their own ministry as the Holy Orthodox Catholic Church in Kentucky. The center of Warnke's ministry remained anti-occult, though. Throughout the early 80s, he and Rose traveled the country warning Christian audiences of the occult menace and described their work in Kentucky helping victims of Satanism. One such victim, a little guy named uh, Jeffy, was so traumatized by years of satanic ritual abuse that he had lapsed into catatonia. However, to date, no one has been able to locate this kid. On May 6, 1985, ABC's 2020 aired a special on Satanism in America called The Devil Worshippers. This allegedly skeptical report by Tom Gerald was alarmist in tone from the beginning to end. Regarding the Ricky Casso case, we heard despite numerous signs that Casso was into Satanism and rock music associated with devil worship, police steadfastly refused to label this case Satanic. The official explanation? A drug-related crime which it was. Gary Lowers allegedly stole 10 packs of uh, PCP from Casso, and Casso exacted revenge. But I'll leave a uh, link in the uh, info bar to check out that story. It's pretty gruesome. Continuing. Much of the program consisted of juvenile graffiti, dog mutilations, and horror movies, but then Mike shows up as a former Satanist to describe some of the practices of devil worship. He sits behind an arrangement of props that include a sword, goblet, and a human skull. Holding up a bone, he explains that Satanists use them to tell the future. He says that he was drawn into Satanism as a young man because he wanted to be somebody special. Contributions to Warnke's ministry topped $1 million in 1985 and reached over $2 million each year from 1987 to 1990. By 1991, he had released eight albums and produced a video entitled, Do You Hear Me? And until the collapse of Jim and Tammy Baker's PTL empire, he was a regular guest on the PTL TV show. Uh, I remember watching that one time, and Mike was on there. Mike and Jim were talking about the Satanic Bible, and they said that there was a rather perverse version of the 23rd Psalm included in uh, Anton LaVey's Satanic Bible, but guess what, kids? It's not there. Which brings me to the next segment of this uh, video, entitled, Mike Joins the Liars Club. Warnke's account of his less than a year as a Satanist became more and more elaborate over the years as his media exposure and, doubtless, his bank account grew. Though the only famous person to appear in the Satan cellar is Anton LaVey, Warnke told Morris Carullo and others that Charles Manson attended the Covered's rituals in 1966 and was reportedly unimpressed, apparently disappointed that Mike only pretended to disavow the Alter Girls. Warnke also claimed that Manson attended the same occult conference in San Francisco where he met Anton LaVey. However, from June of 1960 to March of 1967, Manson was incarcerated at McNeil Island Penitentiary on a violation of the Mann Act, which is a law against white slavery and transportation of women across state lines for immoral purposes, i.e. forced prostitution. Therefore, Manson could not have possibly attended the conference or the coven's rituals. That's lie number one. 
1982, he told Contemporary Christian Music Magazine that he had earned a Ph.D. in philosophy and master's degrees in both theology and Christian education. But remember, since his single term at San Bernardino Valley College, in 1965 through 1966, the only schooling he had was the year at Trinity Bible College. The advanced degrees were purely fictional. That's number two. Uh, beginning in late 1986, the Warnkees talked of establishing a treatment facility for children rescued from Satanism and began taking donations for it. See where we're going with this? <laughs> yeah. And, of course, this center never materialized. By April of 1987, the Mike Warnke Ministries Complex in Bergen, Kentucky, consisted of offices, chapel, and library. There were no medical facilities, no rehab center, and no medical staff except for one Dr. John Cooper, who was hired as director but was fired later that year be without treating a single child. Where did the money go? What's with all the Christian fraud, anyway? <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, Mike and Rose separated in 1989 and divorced in 1991. And six weeks later, Warren Key married Susan Patton. They moved to California where Mike published his books, The Schemes of Satan, and Recovering from Divorce. <laughs> Doubtless, he was becoming quite the expert on that subject. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs>